Welcome back. Uh, this is the tutorial on uh, hidden game design mechanic number 48. <clears throat> this is part of the advanced tutorials based on that um, tutorial make your own mobile game in 60 minutes that is now on YouTube. Uh, normally or actually when I was giving this talk at universities initially what I did is I focused on these hidden game design mechanics during the talk. So it was mainly a theoretical talk and students really didn't like it that much because they didn't get to really learn how to make a game. Uh, they were taught all this theory, but they didn't know how to apply it. So I changed that talk so that it was more practical and there was an interactive lab. And then I had to, you know, to make time for that interactive lab and everything else, I had to cut out all this hidden game de design mechanics stuff. So what I did is, um, you know, I put all that hidden game design mechanics stuff in a book, you know, that's now on Amazon. It's called Mobile Game Design. And so these video tutorials will actually focus on some of those hidden game design mechanics mentioned on the book and um, yeah so that's that's pretty much the motivation of this of these advanced tutorial talks is to actually help students make their own um, you know add these game design mechanics to your own mobile games so that they become more su successful and popular and uh, with that said you know once again these talks are sponsored by chromacoders.org a student club that's meant to help students make their own uh, video games in teams preferably um, okay let's get started so, so this is called hidden game design mechanic number 48 and that's you know number 40 is just a random number to make it sound like you know it's intriguing and uh, basically it's called saving game content and what that is is that basically um, for example you know the zoo game that I helped work on so people are building their own zoo here let's look at this video right so they're building their own zoo they might be proud of their zoo what they might want to do is then save that zoo to their media gallery on their phone or something else like that and once they do that then they can share with other people via email SMS or whatever else it is um, so it's a it's a way you know if you're allowing people to express themselves in your game allow them to save that content and that's what this hidden game design mechanic is and uh, let's get started so what I'm gonna try to do now is with with these uh, game design mechanic tutorials I'm also going to try to have an interactive lab with them so that you can actually implement these game design mechanics in a practical manner. And so what you want to do is, uh, you know, we're going to use Corona again. Corona allows us to focus on the game design rather than the technical details. And in that case, you just go to Anska Mobile, you know, uh, AnskaMobile.com, uh, you know, click on Try Corona, you register. Uh, remember, the demo version allows you to do the same thing as the paid version except the demo version doesn't allow you to deploy to Android or iPhone market but in our case since we're just focused on the game design and we just want to test it on our own phones uh, the demo version works just fine so you do that and then what you want to do is you want to download the code base for this tutorial which is right here chromacoders.org slash hidden mechanic 48 zip download that to your um, desktop right right here I've already downloaded it to the desktop open it up and then you know open up main.lua and open that up with a uh, notepad plus um, plus you know or something else like that notepad plus plus does lua syntax highlighting highlighting which i find very useful um, so let's open it up and then open up corona right there okay good job and um, let's let's open up this uh, project let's see what's going on okay so we open it up and it's a blank screen because all the code is commented out. So let's actually now look at the code. Step one. Now, what I've done with the code is that um, the code, the comments that should be actually uncommented out, I have an uncomment thing in that line that should be uncommented out. So let's just uncomment out the code for step one. So we do that, right? We're going to pretend that we're going to have an isometric scene. In the case of when you're actually putting it in the game, you can actually just pass in the display group of whatever that game content is on the screen at the moment. Um, so let's hit Control R, right, or whatever it is, and um, okay. So let's pretend this is the isometric scene that we have. Now we're going to add an OK button, and this OK button will be the button that players press uh, to save save the data. You know, save the image to their media gallery. And uh, right now it's an OK button, but you know, in your game you might want to actually have an icon with a camera in it. So we have that OK button. Great. Now let's move to step three. And in step three, what we're going to do is we're going to say, you know what, if the player touches the OK button, you know, we add the event listener touch, uh, we're going to call send screenshot listener, which will be a function that will then save the screen. OK. And remember, all these functions are pretty much documented in the Corona API, where if you go to the Corona website, you go to resources and then APIs. 
and you can see all these APIs that make it easy to implement all these features. Okay, uh, so now let's go to step four, and that's really just creating the function to save the screenshot. And so what we do is we uncomment comment out the function declaration. Then what we're going to say is that, you know what, you know, with a touch event, when the player touches the screen, you know, that, that's kind of the begin phase. And then when they finally take their finger off that screen or off that button, that's the end phase. So we're going to say that once the player actually takes their um, finger off the button, we are going to process it. We're going to, you know, hide the OK button because we're taking a screen capture of that whole screen. The way Corona works with this feature is that there's a function called capture screen, which we'll look into that, you know, pretty much captures the whole screen. And uh, so, you know, hide all the UI details and then just focus on the stuff that the player created. And in this case, the UI detail is going to be the OK button. So we turn that to false. And then what we do is we call that capture screen function, as I mentioned. Um, here's the URL that you can use to actually get the documentation on it. So let's copy that and actually put it here. Um, and, and it's also on this API reference screen, too. And so we you know, use the capture screen, and this will tell us all the stuff that it does. You know, capture screen, pretty much, um, you know, <coughs> another interesting note is that it actually, when you call that capture fu screen function, it returns a display group, and that display group is um, on top of all the other display objects. So we don't always want that. You know, once they do the capture screen, you want to be able to uh, allow them to still interact with the game. And so in this case, that means that we're going to have to save that display group. And that's why we have this thing called local screen cap, which is pretty much going to hold that display group. Because once we have the display group that's saved, we want to remove it from the screen. So we do a remove self. And by the way, this capture screen function, it takes in a parameter, um, which is actually the save to album parameter, which is we're going we're gonna to set the true, because we want players to be able to save this to their own album. And so we set that to true, and that's why we put it here. And then, okay, now that we've also, now that we've captured the screen and we've saved it, and then we've removed it, you know, the actual display group that gets put onto the, um, on top of everything else, we're going to return the OK button. You know, we're going to make it visible again. Now what we're going to do is we're going to close out this if statement, you know, to see, make sure it's the end phase. And we're just going to return true in the function. And then we're going to close out the function right here. So there you go. We hit Control Save, you know, Control S. And let's just run it. So we do Control R to relaunch again. Then we hit um, OK. And you see, you saw the OK button blinking because what happened was is that it called Send Screenshot Listener. OK, and then it made the OK button invisible. It did the capture screen, and then it made the OK button visible again. That's why you saw the blinking. So uh, there you go. I think another interesting note that you need to keep in mind with this Capture screen is that if you're going to implement this on Android, make sure that you have the permission of uh, right, per, you know, and this is actually in, in the documentation, is uh, make sure you have the right external storage permission activated because without that permission, you will not be able to actually save to the player's media gallery. So make sure you have that if you're using Android or if, if your game is also on Android. But there you go. This is a nice little uh, game mechanic that you can use that allows players to have more content or be more connected to your game. Um, and now the next tutorial that will come up later on will be a tutorial where you can actually take this, um, you know, whatever photo or something else that you make in the game and allow the players to share it with their friends on Facebook or some other social network. And that's called the Hidden Game Mechanic, uh, Social Distribution Mechanic. And we'll discuss that next time. So uh, thanks again. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, you know, let me know if you have any feedback in the comments. Uh, enjoy. Good luck with your games.